Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez and today I'm doing another episode of my Building the Shot series, which is a series that I created to do my best and break down exactly how one shot of mine was taken. I'm going to go over this image on the screen right here of a leaf today. And this is actually a shot that I took over in San Antonio during uh, a workshop that I did with my friends Roland Sanchez, Eli Infante, and Marco Gilpas. We're actually doing another workshop in Dallas in June and possibly doing Houston in July. So with this photo, the first thing I want to let you guys know is that I took it in about two and a half minutes from start to, to finish. And I wanted to emphasize the time because it isn't so much about how much it took me to take the shot from start to finish, but the kind of the thought process that was involved before I even took a single shot. I had already envisioned, um, at least in that spot, what angle I was going to be um, using, you know, kind of a low angle to get the sky in the background. I was trying to look at the, the way that the sun is going to hit her face. I, was using, I usually use my hand to kind of figure out where the light's going to be and use that kind of to envision where the model's face is going to be. So if there's um, sun over here and my hand is you know turned this way, obviously it'll be dark in the front. And I kind of envision it like that, the, that like, like if my hand <laughs> is the model's face. Elise was actually going to leave during this time, during the time that I was taking this photo. I think immediately after I took the shot, she left. So I saw her during the workshop and I was like, you know what, I, she has a great look. I want to take a picture of her. And I tried my best to uh, lessen the amount of time that it would take to take that shot. So before she even stepped into the picture, I was deciding, okay, this spot's going to work for this, you know, for the composition, for the colors. The leaves in the background of her right now are actually something that I thought of and some, it can kind of give a bit of contrast compared to her outfit and the blue sky. And I just pretty much loved all the colors that were going to be involved in the final image. You know, the greens from the leaves, the purples from the leaves, her outfit, which is like maroon, and then the blue sky. I just like a lot of the color. So I try to envision, you know, something that would get a lot of color. I try to envision how the light's going to fall in a flattering way or in terms of like highlights being from the side, which is usually what I prefer because I prefer to use flash to fill in the main uh, part of the subject, which is going to be the front part. And yeah, I try to think of all these things before I even took a single shot. That pre-visualization is super important to me. I do a lot of mini photo shoots in my head whenever I'm just walking around. I try to, I see good light and I try to think of uh, how I would take that light and use it to create a good photo. So it's something, it's a good skill to, to develop. So I'd recommend you guys do the same. Just try to think of how light can fall and how you would manipulate light with flash. And it's really going to benefit you like it did with me um, because, again, I just took this shot in two and a half minutes from start to finish. But a lot of, you know, thinking ahead was going on. I want to briefly go over the gear that was used to take this shot because it is important to, you know, there's reasons for it. I used the Sony a7R4 because it was my new camera and I wanted to see what it can do and what the resolution that it offers could provide me. I use the Samyang 35 1.4, which is a lens I highly recommend, uh, but mine is actually broken. Uh, and I'm actually curious if anybody else has a Samyang 35 1.4, has yours fallen apart after a year? Because um, it has a year warranty and almost a, you know, a couple, like a month or two after my warranty ended, it started to like fall apart. So kind of, you know, wondering if I should get any Samyang lenses in the future. I might just go for Sigma just because of the tougher build that it offers, even though it's a little bit more expensive. But having said that, again, I really do love that lens and I wish mine was working because it, it's a lens that provided me a wider bit of a scene while still allowing me to get a shot of the field. And I've, took it, I've taken some of my favorite images from last year using that lens. As for the lighting, I used the Godox 8400 Pro. It's my go-to strobe that I take whenever I need to travel and still need a lot of power. Uh, I use the Godox, or not the Godox, the Glow 34 inch beauty dish. It, I believe it's the white interior that I use. And I use this modifier with the 400 specifically because it provides a nice punchy soft light while not being too big like a 40 inch or 60 inch that I do have. So if I, if I need to be absolutely portable, that combo is super great. And um, the stand was the Flashpoint C-Stand, which is, again, something that I always use. I, I tend to always use the C-Stand because it provides a little bit more security in the sense that it won't fall over like other older um, stands that I have used that aren't C-Stands. 
So yeah, but I always carry a cart to carry my gear in, so it's not really an issue. I do my best to make these videos, these building the shot videos, very educational to you guys. I try my best to go over things that other photographers don't necessarily go over that I think are very important. Like my thought process in terms of why I edited the shot a certain way, why I had the subject angled a certain way or the lighting and a lot of things that I don't think get talked about often. So my point is I'm trying to make these videos very educational to you guys and make it a good resource for you guys to learn. But if you guys want to learn a little bit more, then that leads me to today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers memberships with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. You definitely want to make 2020 a year where you explore new skills, deepen those existing passions, and pretty much get lost in creativity with the help of Skillshare's online classes. There's seriously so much to learn on Skillshare. There's a lot of different categories to just browse and see what intrigues you. They have photography, of course. They have graphic design. They have film in case you guys want to make videos. And they also have things like uh, lifestyle and productivity, which is something that I've been really wanting to focus on so that I can make more videos for you guys a lot faster and a lot more clearly and coherent. So that's something that I'm definitely checking into right now to get better at. With all that I offer, Skillshare is actually pretty affordable at costing less than $10 a month for an annual subscription, which is a lot less expensive than a workshop like the one that we did in, to take this photo or an in-person class. So I highly recommend it. The first 500 people to use my link in the description area below will get two free months of premium membership so you guys can explore your creativity. When you guys support the people that support me, it really helps me out and allows me to continue making videos like this. So definitely check them out. Again, my link in the description will give two free months of premium membership to the first 500 people who use that link. Okay, so now that we've gone over the gear and a little bit about the thought process that was involved in how I took this shot on the screen, let's actually show you guys the images in Lightroom and how I kind of you know, went and created that actual final spot, the little bit steps that were involved. Okay, so this is the very first shot that I took. Obviously, it's not ideal. She's dark in front of her and the highlights are kind of strong, but there is a lot of detail in both of those. There's a lot of detail in the highlights and in the shadows. So I could probably manipulate this image like Danny Diamond would, which is like to create like artificial flash using dodge and burn. But obviously we have flash on us, so we might as well use it. So that's what I did. The settings that I used for this shot are ISO 100, F1.4, 1 5 thousandths of a second. And after I took this shot, I felt like the highlights were a little too strong. The ambient was a little bit too strong in general. So I went ahead and reduced the ISO from 100 to 50, which is one stop, and then 5 thousandths of a second to 8 thousandths of a second, which I'm not sure how many stops it is, but it's pretty much going to be darker. And I want to show you guys the image right now on the screen, which is this shot. I actually really prefer the highlights in this shot, so I'm glad I went ahead and did those steps to reduce the ambient. You actually see more detail in the sky. So I'm going to go back and forward so you guys can see more of the blues in the sky. And a lot of times people, when they see my photos, they ask, why did I reduce the ambient so much? Because you want it to be more realistic or something, more airy. Uh, I do it for the colors in the sky more than likely because when you expose the sky or in the ambient in general to be brighter, you're making it brighter, but you're also losing a lot of the color. And my next shot in this uh, series here is a good example of that. This shot right here, obviously you can see it a lot less color because it's not exposed properly. It's overexposed. But I took this shot because I accidentally forgot to turn on high speed sync on my transmitter. There's a button on there that you need to enable on the pro version of the transmitter and I forgot to turn it on. So this shot was actually supposed to be one eight thousandth of a second uh, with the light at full power. So obviously it's a lot brighter than I intended it to be. But um, again, you can use this a little bit of a learning experience to see how exactly the shot would look like at a regular shutter speed with high output, still using that same uh, aperture, which is 1.4. A lot of times people ask me why I use high shutters and it's because of my ability to reduce the ambient and reduce the flash by using that shutter speed, which allows me to use those wide apertures. Otherwise I would need an ND filter. So let's go ahead and move on from this shot to show you the very first shot that I used, that I took with flash, which is this photo right here. After I took this shot at full power, I believe, I reduced the output to, I think it was half power. So I'm going to show you guys that shot now because obviously I felt like the, the skin was too bright on this shot here. So I wanted a more even exposure. So I reduced it to half, which resulted in that image there. 
But after I took the shot and it was exposed correctly on her skin, what I didn't like was the light positioning. So I wanted to go ahead and get it at a more flattering position by bringing it more on axis to, to be in front of her to kind of get a little bit more even lighting on her face because I felt like there's too much shadows on the side there. So after this shot here, I took this photo. And I actually do like this shot a lot, but you can see that there's not um, catch lights in the eye and her pose isn't exactly where I need it to be. So I, go, I went ahead and just adjusted some things after this shot was taken, which is actually how I led to the final image, which is this one. So in this shot here, you can see that I'm a little bit more aimed towards the building. And I wanted to go ahead and get her head space to be a little bit more near the clouds and to get more of the sky in general. So that's why I moved a little bit to the left. And I think it was this shot I think it was this shot that I actually instructed her to pose a little bit more leaned forward so that because of my low angle and how I'm positioned, if she were to stay correctly the way, same way that she was, which is standing straight, it, my lowering, my lower position, that's what I meant to say, is going to make her look like she's like this, like leaning back. So I have to correct that, um, correct that angle. So I asked her to lean forward so she's with me on the same uh, kind of like plain. So I asked her to lean forward and that's resulted in a normal perspective of how she looked like. Again, if she didn't do that, then she would look like this. So I asked her to do that in this shot, but then after I took this shot, I wanted to get the light, a little bit more catch lights in her eye. So I took this shot and this shot here still doesn't have a catch light in the eye here. I believe the right eye. Yeah, you can see that there's a little bit of catch light in the left eye but not in the right eye. I actually add that um, catch light from the left eye to the right eye in Photoshop, which I'm gonna show you in a second. But you, I do wanna point out, cause it's kind of like an elephant in the room that I didn't necessarily get the shot fully in focus. That's on me. I don't know exactly what was going on. My best guess is like I told you guys before, my Samyang 35 1.4 is not working anymore. And I'm guessing this is like early stages of that. So I, I do want to invest in the Sigma 35 1.2 cause that lens was actually specifically designed for Sony mount and it's sharp throughout. So I want to try that out and see how that works out because again, my sampling is not working anymore. All right. So moving forward, one thing that I, I wanted you guys to know is that I actually edited this shot on my laptop and I didn't transfer how I edited it onto this shot here. So I kind of want to actually just kind of do a little bit of actual real life editing with you here while you're watching. So you guys can see exactly what goes through my head while I adjust the image. So I want to go ahead and start by, I'm pretty sure um, adjusting the temperature to be a little bit lower because I feel like it's a little too warm. So I think it's like 5,900 is fine. I do feel like the image needs a lot more color. So usually what I do is go to the blue primary section and boost it up to 60 to 80. And I'm going to go to 80 actually and keep it there. But usually when I do this, the oranges and the blues tend to be a little bit too strong. But for this shot, I, I think it actually looks fine because she's actually pale. If she was Hispanic and had more orange skin like me, then it might be too strong, but it works out. What I'm seeing is that there's a lot of green tint. So I would correct that. I would add more like 18. Uh, I feel like 18 is fine. Even though 12, what it did on auto, I always shoot auto white balance was a little bit too green. So um, it's probably because of this greenery here that it corrected it to be like that. But aside from that, what I usually would do is maybe decre decrease the exposure um, by like one fourth of a stop and then add a little bit of brightness selectively to the, whoop, to the subject by using the adjustment brush, which is shortcut K and then um, not eyes, but exposure and just paint on a little bit of exposure on her and then after that, obviously it looks too bright right now. It's too fake looking. So I would reduce it a lot. And I think even 0.2 is fine. It's just a little bit of extra kick. It's just a little bit of extra kick. And then I would go ahead and add the bright, um, add some brightness to the eyes, which I do have a preset for that I created. I believe it's eyes. Yeah. And then I'll go ahead and just brighten up the eyes. And then after that, I think I would be done. Again, I said this shot could be a little bit sharper. So sometimes I will add a little bit of sharpness to the image. Um, and actually, I don't think I did that yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 
I would go to probably 60 and then I would keep it at that. I usually go 60 to 80. I try to keep it at 60, but sometimes I'll go to 80 if it's a little bit out of focus like this shot. And then after that, I think I'm good. Maybe, maybe, maybe add a little bit of vibrance. But after that, this is pretty much exactly what I would aim for. A very colorful image that has a little bit of um, highlight on the subject using that little bit of exposure. And after that, I'm gonna go ahead and move into Photoshop right now to show you guys exactly how I edited the shot. Okay, so now we're here in Photoshop and what I wanna show you guys is how step-by-step uh, -step how I edited the shot. And I, I labeled this one very much, so I you know, hope you guys in, uh, enjoy the organization of that. But again, first thing I mentioned is that the catch light in the left eye wasn't in the right eye. So what I did was I copied that left eye right there and kind of cleaned it up a bit because it was there was a little bit of eyelashes covering the catch light. And then I copied that catch light to the right eye and tried my best to place it not exactly where the other eye was, but um, where it would naturally fall. So I, that's the catch lights in the eye. The next thing I did was I did a little bit of frequency separation. So you guys can see on her skin, the detail of her skin right there, it's a little bit softer. You can see in the forehead as well. And I usually do um, very light frequency separation on the skin and I try to keep it more for kind of correcting like wrinkles. I, I use it as a digital iron basically. You can see right there that I, I, I removed some wrinkles. And after that, what I did was I removed some of the blemishes using the spot hanging brush on her face right there. So let me go ahead and show you guys that. And that's pretty much just to remove little minor things, but you could leave them in if you want to. Dodge and burn is actually a huge step. So I want you guys to see that. This isn't doing anything, but this one here, yeah. Huge step. I, I use dodge and burn to really give my photos extra depth and make the skin a lot smoother. Obviously not trying to be too smooth, which I got accused of for the shot, but she has great skin. So usually when I work with a model with great skin, soft lighting plus a little bit of my editing makes it look too much. So, um, but I don't mind. It's, it's actually how they look like. So I just want to show you guys this, exactly what I dodged and burned. You can see something right here is something that was brighter or darker that I've dodged so they can kind of eliminate it. And yeah, I actually do have a visual for you guys to see exactly how I dodged and burned. Um, it's freaky, but let me explain. So um, this what you're seeing right here, all the stuff that's blue is dodged and all the stuff that's this um, purple is burned. So let me go ahead and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. So all the stuff that you're seeing right now in this purple is all the stuff that I um, burned right here. And all the stuff that you're seeing right here, all this blue is stuff that I, um, I dodged. See, and then this is a little bit brighter so you guys can see, obviously it's getting a little bit warped, um, a little bit of weird polarization. But I want you guys, I wanted you guys to see exactly how that um, dodge and burn looks like. But I'm gonna take it off now because it looks a little bit freaky. And now I'm gonna go ahead and continue. The color is something that I used, um, I adjusted using the color balance and just experimenting really, but I used a couple of different things like levels, color balance, um, sampling color fills, different colors, and just playing with the opacity. It's actually 2% right there. And after that, I added a little bit of contrast by increasing the levels and brightening the image just a little bit. It's very subtle. And after that, the color was the, kind of a huge step. So I want you guys to see the before and after. This is before and this is after. Before and after. So the steps that I took to get to that point was I made a gradient map and just adjusted with the, the colors to be different ways. Um, I experimented with this one here, either this one or this one. And now I'm gonna go ahead and go to selective color to adjust the cyans, uh, the blue of the sky. And then I adjusted the reds of the image to get to that level. And then I adjusted that green there to get that because I felt like it was just too out of place. And when I brought it to this level here, it was just right where it needed to be. And after that, I kind of made it a little bit more cooler, a lot cooler. And I actually really liked the effect. And actually after that, I did have a sharpen layer right here just so you guys can see how that was using the high pass filter method, but it's not necessary. And I think after that, I'm just gonna zoom in at a hundred so you guys can see 
the sharpening that I did. Yeah, it's very subtle. It's like blinking you miss it kind of uh, sharpening. But yeah, aside from all that, I didn't do anything else to the image other than kind of maybe format it for Instagram, which I have a video on that you guys can check out in the top right corner of the screen. So you guys can uh, check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I look forward to making the next one for you guys. Um, if you have any suggestions about videos that you want to see from me, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in that next video.